Erica, say smack him a gob. Smack a zoot a gob a gob a zoot a zoot a zoot a zoot a zoot a zoot Okay, that was good. Smack a a gob. It's time for the news. But before I go into the news, I want to give a special thanks to Ryan Faye who sent that video that you saw, his three-year-old, uh, Erica, adorable. If you got a five-year-old or younger, have them say schmack a gob send it to this email right here, and I'll put it in the beginning of the news. I got like three or four more left, so I'm putting them up in order. So now for the news. All right, Bruce Kulik reacts to Ace Frehley's uh, comment of how Bruce blows Tommy Thayer off the stage. I talked about this last week in the news and Bruce did an interview with Rob's School of Music and he said, I always knew that Ace liked me. He would say kind things about me. Not that I think he comments too much on Kiss and everything. His relationship with them is very different than it would be for me. I was just one of those lucky guys who stepped in. And what I think he's reflecting on, which has been wonderful, of course, is the fact that I was able to take signature riffs of his, but then again, make it my own. So I think he appreciated that. Now, clearly Gene and Paul do want Tommy to be the spaceman, which means to play more like Ace. And Tommy always knew that stuff better than me. So it was part of his job's description, if you get what I mean. And I don't fault him for it. I think he does, he does it great. And I'm good friends with Tommy. Right on, Bruce. Trying to keep it even on both sides, not to piss anybody off. We know, we know what you're doing here. And it is cool that Ace said that. And what's even cooler is how Bruce took Ace's riffs and played them non-scabliciously. All right, next story. David Coverdale says, proposed Coverdale page reissue will include some nice surprises. Man, it's just a surprise if it comes out, period, because I've been dying to get it on vinyl. I've looked into it. It's very expensive, so give me a nice 180 gram, and yeah, throw in some bonus stuff. I don't care. That album rules. I absolutely love that album. I find it very underrated. Yeah, it might have sold a million or so, but it should have sold 10 million. It's that good, in my opinion. Very excited. It's going to take a couple years, though, because they want to do it like a... Uh, anniversary thing I think like maybe two years from now will be like the what is it 30th anniversary? I don't know man years are going by so fast I don't know uh, how many decades or what and speaking of Coverdale he blasts Deep Purple over his treatment at the Rock Hall induction what had happened in 2016 literally once it had been announced that we were officially being inducted into it the current Deep Purple refused to go if Richie Blackmore was going to be there. And this was like 72 hours before when I was getting ready to fly with my family. And this cost me like 75000 or 85000 because you have to pay for all the tables apart from the ones you're on. And I had my daughter flying from Germany. My son, out of college, came over. It was a family affair. Uh, the singer who played with Deep Purple, along with Hughes from 1973 to 76, went on. And then suddenly, Glenn Hughes and I were told, well, we don't want you singing with us. Initially, I'd spoken to Ian Gillen about coming up and singing the background of Smoke on the Water, because originally, they were going to close the show with it. So that suddenly was pulled the plug. They tried to stop us doing speeches, and my wife was fucking furious. Apart from the fact she spent a fortune on posh dresses. And I said, fuck it, nobody's going to keep us off. I got in touch with Carol, Richie's manager, and I said, tell him to come with me. Nobody's going to fucking touch him. Tell him to come with me. And he didn't want to do it. The first thing I said when I was up there was, none of us would have been standing here without Richie Blackmore. Steve Morris and Don Airy were more complimentary to Glenn and I than the other guys. We had a blast. We had a fucking great time. I'm very happy that I am who I am, and I just talked to Glenn the other day. 
about it. It's like, what the fuck was up their asses? So we didn't get the jam, which is fine. We were back doing press while they were performing, just having a good old time like the unrighteous brothers always do. And making a final point about Blackmore Towering's contribution to Deep Purple, David said, he doesn't give a shit. He knows he was responsible for the majority of the music there. And it's true, none of us, I mean none of us would have been on that stage without Richie Blackmore. None of us. Yeah, he's got a point there, man. I mean, it's because of Richie Blackmore they went the more hard rock direction after the the Rod Evans era. I, I might have the story a little confused, but I know it had something to do with the concerto orchestra John Lord did, and they had an agreement that, uh, look, I'll do this, but we got to go in a more hard rock direction, Richie told John. And after that came In Rock, my personal favorite uh, Deep Purple album. And uh, that's when they really took off. So yes, Richie is very responsible for them being up on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And plus, he came up with Smoke on the Water, the riff. All right, next story. Ex-Wasp guitarist Chris Holmes says he will never get over being screwed by Blackie Lawless. Said he'll take that to his grave. And what he's talking about is royalties. Uh, all the songs that he helped write, he never got any money for it, and it all went to Blackie. I watched the interview with the, it was on the Metal Voice and with Jimmy K, cool guy. I was on uh, one of the Metal Voice live stream. Uh, Jimmy K digs what I do, so he had me on there. Anyway, it was a great interview and boy, Chris went off on Blackie Lawless. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. And he went back to, he explained, he went back to Wasp for the Kill Fuck Die and Hell Dorado, only to be screwed over again. So he said, that's it. He said, the only way I'll go back to Wasp now is that they pay me the royalties they owe me. So that Blackie Lawless, hey man, a lot of people have had a problem with Blackie Lawless, including me. Here's a clip of him really mad at me when he spotted me with a video camera back in 2001. You know, I'm fucking sick. Yep, you want to shove that camera up my ass. Uh, there's a lot more to that story, but it's so long to talk about. But I did talk about it on my review of the first Wasp album that you can see on this channel. All right. Now we're going to go into a bunch of Van Halen news. And that's what I'm going to close it with. But there's a lot to talk about. Uh, the Eddie Van Halen Memorial Ideas sought by Pasadena, according to the Pasadena Star News... I talked about this last week, how they were having a meeting. And city manager Steve Mermel was directed to come up with ideas for how to best honor the musician. Among suggestions for the memorial are for Alleyway Electric Drive to be named uh, for Eddie. Erecting a monument somewhere in the city, renaming a park, a lifestyle statue, and turning his childhood home into a historic landmark. Councilman Victor Gordo suggested that Mermel bring together a public group to figure out the most appropriate way to remember Van Halen, who attended school in Pasadena with his drummer, his drummer brother, Alex, and played backyard parties in the area with Van Halen in the early 1970s before being signed to a record deal and achieving worldwide fame. In the last three weeks, the city has been bombarded with requests to pay tribute to Eddie. To recognize both his local connection to Pasadena as well as the impact that his artistry had on music. So, uh, that's all, you know, that's all we got so far. So, let's hope it happens. And Helmet's uh, leader, Paige Hamilton, said, Van Halen's Hot for Teacher maybe the greatest music video ever made maybe no definitely i've been saying that for years my all-time favorite 
music video is hot for teacher and no maybe about it. All right, Wolfgang Van Halen has blasted U.S. Weekly for publishing an allegedly fact-challenging cover story of his mother, including how she is dealing with the death of his father, Eddie Van Halen. Earlier today, Wolfgang tweeted out a picture of the news issue of U.S. Weekly with his mother on the cover, along with the headline, Valerie Bertinelli, Untold Story, Love, Loss, and Staying Strong. The only thing printed in this piece of toilet paper that's true is that we all loved my father. This is not a new interview. My mother did not speak to them for this. That is all. He also edited in a separate tweet, I know what a lot of you guys are going to say. Just ignore it, bro. I'm not going to stand by and let people publish lies and make family tragedy something someone else's entertainment you know i gotta i gotta agree with them man i mean they're grieving and they gotta put up with all this crap and you know hey man wolfie's grieving man and seeing this stuff pisses them off so hey i'm not gonna be one to tell you wolfie to just let it go i'm gonna let i'm gonna tell you to let it out blast these fuckers man let the man's family mourn properly you know that's the fame of that's the price of fame man you know eddie died and we were all like whoa we didn't see it coming because i mean we all knew he was sick but he was in the hospital several days before he died and not one person knew or else it'd be all over all over the news only family members knew they all were by his side by why he died and that's why you got to keep stuff hush you know a lot of times when people die uh, celebrities die we don't know till they die you know it's rare that we get oh so and so is dying in the hospital because if we would have known Eddie was in the hospital facing death you know that hospital would have been covered with blood sucking reporters because hey if we get some kind of news story we can get money just feeding off you know celebrities death which is sickening like I'm seeing all these Van Halen shirts coming out you know, unauthorized. It's sickening, man. All right, so the last Van Halen news. Well, there's two more. David Lee Ross shared a song from his unreleased album with John Five. And the song is called Over the Rainbow Bar and Grill. And I absolutely love it. I think Dave sounds fantastic. It's a mellowish type song. Um, I'm a little unclear. Everybody's a little unclear because there's people online saying this is new. There's people online saying this is old. Nobody knows. Ask John Five. He'll give you the answer because John Five and Dave did an album that's been done for a while now. And I wish it comes out. I mean, Dave did launch the Roth Project online comic feature. Uh, five songs co-written with John Five, but... I saw that story, but I didn't see the other four songs. But all I can say is I love that song that he put out. It's chill. It's not what you expect. It's not hard rock. It's like a chill song. But I think Dave sounds fantastic on it. So eat me, people that say Dave can't sing no more. All right, the final story. This song, this picture was, uh, I've never seen this picture before. It's a picture with Dave, Eddie, Chuck Norris, and some other people, and... Uh, this was taken on the day Chuck Norris showed Eddie Van Halen how to play Eruption with his nose hairs. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you want to donate, I got a PayPal below. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Thanks. Schmack -a gob For those that use social media, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And you can join the Almost Human 56 Facebook page. All links are in the description below. A lot of you been asking for it. Schmack em a gob merch. Yes, many types of shirts, long sleeves, short sleeves, hoodies, you name it. Plus other stuff like shower curtains and bedspreads and mugs and socks and clocks. And oh, I can go on. But why should I? The link is below. Just click the link below in the description for all the schmack em a gob merch. Order yours now. Schmack em a gob.
Hey, check out my podcast, The Vieira Vault, on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. Subscribe. The links are below. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for those who love politics. A South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe. A watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido. Ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast. And the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcasts. So check out RatSoundReview.com or search RatSoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.